Hello and welcome back to another Mech Deck Tech. Today we have our third upgrade guide for the Fallout Commander Precons. We're heading back to where it all kind of started from the, uh, the Fallout of Alt 76 with the Wise Mothman. Wise Mothman is interesting, they really focus on that new rad counter support, and whenever the ETB or attack, each player is going to get a rad counter whenever one or more non-land cards are milled, which the rad counters enable. Uh, we're going to put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to X target creatures where X is the number of non-land cards milled this way. So we're doing mill, we're doing plus one plus one counter G, kind of synergies here. It's a good time. As always, we're going to take 10 cards out and add 10 cards in to replace them, so let's take a look at what didn't make that cut. Starting off, we have Cathedral Acolyte, so each creature we have with a counter on it would have Ward 1, and we could tap to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature that ETB'd this turn. It's honestly not a bad effect, I think that the ward has potential, but Ward 1 is pretty easily payable, it's a very minor tax. And I feel like in Commander, in particular, you know, there's not a whole lot of single target removal anyways, so attacks of one just isn't all that strong. Contaminated Drink is up next. We are able to draw X cards, and then we get half of X rounded up in terms of rad counters. So we're doing a lot of, like, self-mill in that respect. We do have a little bit of Graveyard Recursion, so not the worst, but... I think we have more repeatable card draw added in that kind of makes up for taking Contaminated Drink out. Corpse Jack Menace uh, is out here being a little little token doubling, not doubling, no it is doubling, uh, effect. Uh, we have other ways of doing this. I think that he's a little expensive for what he does. Uh, maybe he should have stayed, you know, this was definitely a tough cut, but... It's one that I'm going to stand by. Fraying Sanity is really just more mill. Um, it only affects a single player. We kind of want to mill everybody all at once. Uh, not a bad mill card, but just not strong enough to get to stick around. Lily Bowen, Raging Grandma, enters the battlefield with some counters on them. Beating over upkeep, we get to double the number of counters on them. And once its power is... Uh, over 16. We get to remove all but one of them and gain one life for each counter removed that way. It's interesting. Um, it feels like a splash of life gain, and I'm not a big proponent of splashing life gain index. It's also a little on the slow side. Right, so triggers at upkeep. So turn two that it's out, which is really, at the earliest, kind of turn five, realistically. Maybe we ramped a little, got it out early, but we're going to call it turn five. It's up to four. Turn six is up to eight. Turn seven is up to 16. Turn eight to what? Gain 15 life? I think, I think we could do better. Obviously, the fact that it grows bigger, like, is a threat in its own, but Lily... We're going to let you go. Lumbering Mega Sloth is another kind of like big doby dude. Um, they enter tap, so they're not even good luck the turn they come out. They could be a very big 8-8 with Trample that's super cheap. But I just... They're slow. They're not impacting the board right away. I think we could do better. Piper Wright, Public Reporter. So whenever they deal damage to a player, we get to investigate that many times. Whenever we sacrifice clues, we get to put plus one plus one counters on a target creature that we control. I think Piper Wright is interesting. Um, she's obviously meant to kind of beef herself up, right? She wants those plus one plus one counters. Then when we're stacking clues, it's like, oh, cool. You know, we're getting card draw. We're making her even beefier. Uh, but she didn't quite make the cut on this initial run. Recon Craft Theta. 
Kind of a weird vehicle. Enters the battlefield, we get to create a 0-0 alien with a counter on it. Whenever it attacks, we get to proliferate. It has crew 2. So the alien it creates doesn't get to actually crew it at all. Big sad on our part. Um... Sure, we could crew it with other things. The proliferate's nice, but it's it's extra steps. I don't mind vehicles, but like they need to be real juicy, and I don't feel like the juice here is worth that squeeze. Strength Bubblehead follows it up. It's a mana rock for three, which we know we don't like. We could also pay three to put out some counters. Um, where X is the number of bobbleheads we control, we can only activate that at sorcery speed. So. It's cool, right? It's it's plus one, plus one counter synergy. We're putting all the counters on a single creature. But we only have maybe two bubbleheads in this deck total from the start. Um, now we're down to one because we're taking out strength. This might have been the deck that only had one. I don't quite recall. Either way, strength bubbleheads out. Last of the Cuts is something that I actually tend to add to other decks. Um, and it's a tireless tracker. So, Landfall Investigate, I think the investigation aspects that they're trying to slip into this are interesting. Uh, it's another, hey, whenever you sack a clue, Tireless Tracker gets bigger. Uh, we don't have a ton of, like, we're going to play multiple lands a turn. We don't have enough clue synergy for me to care about creating the clues. Sure, it's card draw, but again, we have better ways of drawing cards in the stack. I think we'll be okay without them. So those are the 10 cards that are being taken out. What are we adding in to replace them? Starting off, we have a no-brainer in the form of Simic Ascendancy. So for, you know, a green and a blue, we get this enchantment that cares about us putting on plus one, plus one counters. Ideally, we're doing it all the time, and it has a way to do it on its own, so it is a nice, like, sort of mana sink for us. Beginning of our upkeep, if we have at least 20 growth counters on this, it gets a growth counter every time we add a plus one plus one counter to any creature. Um, we just win the game. Alternate win cons are nice ways of kind of just wrapping things up. Normally, we save our golden nightmares for the end, but this is our golden nightmare of the deck. And it's the Blood Chief Ascension. So beginning of our end step, if an opponent lost two or more life, we get to put a quest counter on it. And whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, if Blood Chief Ascension has three or more quest counters on it, that player will lose two and we're going to gain two. So with the mill effects that we have going on, Blood Chief Ascension is actually super strong. I don't think that... It's very difficult to ping our opponents for damage on their turn. Especially because we don't have to be the ones that did it, right? If we have enough defenses up and people are attacking anyways, throwing around damage, we're going to get these Ascension counters. We really only need one. We have enough Proliferate kind of in the deck to beef it up. And then each time they're milling a card, which we're making them do all the time, they're taking damage. And it's going to trigger on each card, because it's whenever a card, not whenever one or more. So I think Blood Chief Ascension is a chef's kiss ad for this deck. Speaking of Mill, we of course have Mind Crank. Uh, so Mind Crank, I think in combination with Blood Chief Ascension, might just be an instant win that I didn't realize I had added to this deck, but it's dirty as fuck. Uh, yeah, I think it is. They lose two life whenever they mill, once we have enough counters on Blood Chief Ascension. Minecrank is like, oh, did you lose life? Mill cards. Blood Chief Ascension is like, oh, did you mill cards? Lose life. Ooh, that's dirty. That's so dirty. I can't wait to play it. <laughs> Following up that uh, dirty combo that I just realized I had in here now, we have Ripples of Potential. So we get to proliferate, and then we get to choose any number of permanents that had counters put on them this way and have them phase out. Really just a nice little bit of protection for ourselves, right? It's like, now you see me, now you don't. You're not wiping my board, you're not targeting my things. We're out of here, okay? Moving into creatures, we have Thrumming Bird, right? Kind of an obvious choice. 
1 1 flyer for 2, but whenever it deals combat damage to a player, proliferate. You know, Thrunberg is not going to stay a 1 1. Ideally, we're kind of passing out more and more rad counters. More rad counters means a higher chance of being able to pass out more 1 1 counters to more creatures. It kind of works itself. Sir Conrad the Grim, whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into any graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature leaves the graveyard, Sir Conrad is going to deal one to each opponent. Uh, this also works just stupid well with Minecrank. Um, stupid well. So, Sir Conrad, another just like really good add for the deck. We're gonna we're gonna do some damage here. Herald of Secret Streams is like, hey, do your creatures have plus one, plus one counters on them? And I'm like, oh my goodness, they do. He's like, cool, they can't be blocked. Just go ahead and attack with your big, beefy plus one, plus one creatures. And I'm like, I will do that, Herald of Secret Streams. I will. Uh, so we're just making unblockable creatures. No big deal. Flux Channeler is more proliferation in action. So whenever we're casting non-creature spells... We only have 28 creatures in the deck, so we actually do have quite a bit of non-creature spells to cast. We're going to proliferate. That means extra rad counters. That means extra plus one, plus one counters. That means extra quest counters. You name it, we're doing it. Proliferation, not done yet. We have an Evolution Sage, so we have Landfall Proliferate. So, ideally we're triggering this once a turn. You know, I don't think we're going to get much more than that. We do have a couple of ramp cards so maybe they get to go off like two three times i think max in a turn but those rad counters are going to go a long way to milling our opponents and just really letting us kind of run away with this game last up but certainly not least we have danny pink so danny pink is from the doctor who pre-cons they have mentor but more importantly uh, they're going to be a really good source of card draw for us. Creatures we have, uh, rather creatures we control have, whenever one or more counters are put on it for the first time each turn, we're going to draw a card. The rad counters in combination with the wise moth man means that we're potentially passing out, you know, counters each turn, not just on our own. So this is going to keep our hand nice and full good to go. Now, as always, we do have some cards that were a little too expensive to make the cut. Some honorable mentions, if you will. So let's take a look at what we have. We have Kami of Whispered Hopes. This is some more plus one plus one counter support. Uh, so if one or more plus one plus one counters we put onto a permanent we control, they get an extra one. Just nice. Uh, and then there are also a mana dork, where we get to add mana equal to their power. Only one color, but I think that's fine. Kodama of the East Tree is going to give all of our modified creatures trample. We like trample with our big beefy boys. And whenever they deal damage, we get to look for basic lands and put them onto the battlefield tapped. Just also super nice, right? We're ramping hard, we're ramping fast. If our uh, evolution sage is already out, we're getting to proliferate a bunch. Just a good, nice one-two punch. Moldrotha is actually really important. Um, if you have a copy, 100% should be in there. Sitting around seven bucks, we already had a couple like $10 cards, which is why I didn't want to also tack him in. But the, mill, the deck does self-mail as well as mailing others. Moldrotha is going to be like, cool. My graveyard is fine. I'm going to like just play some cards back. You know, me losing my key pieces isn't me losing my key pieces. Remanap Excavator is another kind of expensive way to let you play lands from your grave. We have a couple other effects that do this in here. Uh, but just, again, self-mill, we're working around it. Roaming Throne is stupid good, right? We're going to choose Mutant. Uh, most of our creatures are mutants anyways, and even the ones that aren't, we don't really... Doubling their effects would be cool, but I think doubling up those rad counters is kind of where we want to be. Zelix Sandy Flare is really just mill, and whenever a player mills one or more creatures, we get to create some horrors. Kind of interesting, sitting around 10 bucks, but it's just a nice way to kind of keep our board full. 
reanimate. There's actually quite a few of these. This is the example that I'm using. But just a nice way to be like, cool, I'm a cheap back a creature that I milled. Tesserit's Gambit is a draw to proliferate. So we card draw is nice. Proliferation is nice. I'm willing to pay two life if I don't have access to blue or just don't feel like paying the extra blue mana. I think it's pretty good. Crucible of Worlds, let's just play Lands for Graves, sitting around $17, a little too expensive to be like, yeah, definitely put this in like your, your budget deck. The Ozolith is a beast in these kind of decks. You know, it's gonna uh, hold onto those counters for you. They are sitting at $41 right now, my goodness. Um, but they keep them whenever the board gets wiped, they redistribute them later. Super strong, if you have a spare copy lying around, definitely use it. Last up is a land recommendation, and it's Karn's Bastion, just for that proliferation. But guys, that's the deck. Were there cards that I took out that you think were a mistake? Cards that I put in that you don't feel quite fit the theme that we're going for? Uh, next week we'll have Caesar's Legion, and then we'll be wrapped up and we'll be moving on to Thunder Junction. Alright guys, until next time... Have a good one.